Now one of the most common questions that I receive is where do I place the floor jack? And Honda makes it quite easy. As you can see, there's an arrow pointing to the metal frame. This is an excellent spot because it's dead center. So in other words, as we jack up the car, it will raise the driver and the passenger side at the same time, as opposed to jacking up one side at a time, then lowering the vehicle, going to the other side and doing it all over again. So just use this mark, go dead center. We'll place jack stands on both sides and it will make the job a lot more fluid and quicker and easier. So today we have the Honda back in the shop. Specifically, we're replacing the automatic transmission fluid. Now this will just be a fluid change, not a flush. If you want to do a flush, then you'll do these steps three times. And I'll explain a little bit more as we get into the, uh, into the job. But in this case, we're just changing the fluid and that's it. Now for this vehicle, it's required every 120,000 miles or 72 months, which is six years. If you're not sure, just look at the owner's manual. Everything is in here that you need. Intervals, fluid types, capacities, it's all in here. So it'll just make your life a lot easier. You can a lot of times download these as well. Regarding the Honda, you need very specific fluid. And uh, I'm sure many of you probably are already know this, but you need Honda Z1 or DW1 fluid. Ah. However, to get that fluid, the Honda specific fluid, uh, most auto parts stores don't carry it. In other words, you have to go to Honda or Acura dealership, pick it up, or order it online. Now, in a case like this, the client needs the car back tomorrow, so we need to do it tonight. We don't have a choice. However, at the local auto parts store, they do usually have this. This is Castrol Transmax Import Multi-Vehicle. We used the same training fluid, in fact, a couple years ago when we did the uh, fluid change on an Acura TL. And that car still runs perfectly fine today. If you don't feel comfortable using this, perfectly fine. Then get the Honda fluid, just order it a few days before you plan on doing the job. If you do want to use something like this, just make sure you look at the back of the bottle because there are a lot of different products for automatic transmission fluids. So look at the back of the bottle. In this case, this is what you want to see. You want to see that it's recommended for use in vehicles that require Honda Acura ATF Z1 DW1. Again, you want to see that. If you don't see that on the bottle, then don't use it. All right, enough yapping. Let's just get to the job. Now, locating the drain plug, it's quite simple, in fact. If you look right about here, right here is your engine oil pan. Right there is the drain plug when you do the engine oil. And this is your transmission right to the right of it. And right here, let me put my finger on it. Uh, let me turn the camera so I can see you guys. Okay, so right here is the drain bolt for the transmission fluid. To remove that, just get yourself a 3H drive ratchet. Okay, and we'll also use a hammer. And I'll show you why, it just makes the job a little bit easier. So we'll place the end of the ratchet on the bolt, take off the, the bolt here, let the fluid drain, and we'll go ahead and add new fluid in. So let me show you how we do this also. Make sure the car is warmed up. In other words, once the radiator fans kick on, the car is properly warm. This allows more fluid to come out of the vehicle. So be careful because the fluid will be warm, but you really want to have it up to operating temperature before you do this job, just to get as much fluid out as possible. Now these drain bolts can be relatively hard to remove. So what you could do is get yourself a three pound hammer and you give it a good knocking or this is just a, what size we got here, 19 millimeter socket with an extension. And this will give you extra leverage to get this guy off. All right, so let's give it a shot here. And you can see how tight it is. There we go. And that's all it takes to it. So you get a hammer or use an extension because it's very, very tight. Then have your trusty drain pan ready to grab the old oil. And here we go. So we'll let that drain and we'll clean off the uh, drain plug here. So just clean off the drain bolt here. This is a uh, magnet on the end and it's designed to pick up metal particles inside the transmission. So if you find little particles on here, 
perfectly normal. It's just doing its job. And this is a uh, the washer. Most manufacturers, they always say to replace it, but to be honest, uh, if it's still in good shape like this one is, you can reuse it. And when you reinstall the drain bolt, you can torque it if you have a torque wrench, around 36 foot-pounds. Most of you probably won't have a torque wrench, so just give it a good tug. Uh, as you can see, it was very tight. So give it a good tug when you, uh, when you replace or reinstall the drain bolt. Make sure it's nice and tight. And of course, once we wrap this up, just check for leaks. So let's uh, move on to the next step. Now when it comes time to reinstalling the fluid, you really have two options. Option one is there's a filler hole with a 24 millimeter nut. Now when we did the Acura TL transmission fluid replacement, many of you just could not remove that nut because it's pretty far deep down in the engine bay, you need a pretty long, long socket. It's a little bit longer on the TL, but regardless, you need a long socket and you need a 24 millimeter size nut, which many of you don't have as well. So what you can do as a contingency is right here is the dipstick for the transmission fluid. Here's your battery and here's the dipstick. So just remove the dipstick from the filler tube. And what we'll do is we'll insert a funnel into the filler tube. I'm sorry for the lighting. It's pretty hard to get a good lighting in here. But we'll come in for a zoom, we'll insert the dipstick into the filler tube, excuse me, we'll insert a funnel into the filler tube and reinstall the fluid that way. I did measure what came out of the transmission case, it was around 3 quarts, but we will check, we want to go up to the upper level on the dipstick, and then we'll check the fluid by starting the car, waiting until the radiator fan kicks on, which means it's properly warm, and then we'll turn off the car and check the fluid level. So there's the opening, and just get yourself a long funnel if you have one, the longer the better. And there we go. Oh, don't forget the paper towel. Oh boy. Hold on. All right, we're back. Here we go. Missed the funnel. Make sure it's nice and in there so it doesn't leak. Okay. Now before we reinstall the dipstick, just take note of the shape. You have a little notch here on the right at the 3 o'clock position here. And if you take a look at the filler hole, right there, you just want to line it up. It's a very tight fit. Honda does a terrific job with, uh, with the quality. So let's just go ahead and insert the dipstick here. A little hard with one hand, but here we go. Make sure you mark up that notch. Push it down. Okay. Make sure I'm in it. Okay. You see how that just goes in just like so? We'll remove it. And let's take a look. I'm taking a look. It's right here. It's right at the second level. And that's where you want to be. So as you can see, that's all that it really takes to replace the fluid. If you do want to flush everything out, after this first step, what you're going to do is go for a drive, come back, drain the fluid, add new fluid, go for a drive, come back, drain the fluid, and add. You need around 9 quarts if you want to flush everything out. And lastly, regarding uh, filters, there are two filters on this car. <coughs> Excuse me. There's an internal filter that you don't change unless you're doing an overhaul, and an external filter. Now the external looks like a fuel filter. Now you can change the external filter also if you wish. The repair manual does not specifically say to replace it. However, if you want to replace it, go for it. Uh, just YouTube, YouTube it. It's getting late guys. Just YouTube it and uh, there are plenty of videos showing on how to replace it. It's maybe around $25 a genuine Honda part. And lastly, we will have a coolant video on this very shortly. Uh, everything will also be on carsandtoys.net. Uh, where everything's categorized under maintenance, brakes, cooling, trouble codes, all that stuff. It's all on there. And uh, that's really about it. So thank you for watching. We'll see you shortly. And uh, I'm going to bed.